I'll start all over again. Good morning, church. We're here to have a wonderful time in our presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Who all feel good this morning? Oh, yeah. Good. Now, y'all might be looking around for your pastor. I'm going to tell you right now, he is not here today. <laughs> We're going to carry on as if he is still in the back somewhere hiding. Remember, God's work goes on with or without him, goes on with or without you, goes on with or without me. His will is going to be done here on earth as in heaven. Now let us all stand and pray. Saints of God, prayer. Prayer is always in order, always in order. How, how many just good to be alive? I know you got some troubles. I know you, you got some heartaches and amen. You got some bills to be paid if you ain't got nothing. I got something I can let you have. But it's just good to be alive. Amen. How many, how many woke up and your children was all right this morning? Come on now. I don't have to tell you what's happening. You already, you already know. You, you already know. The devil is busy, y'all. He ain't playing. He playing for keeps. Our Father God, in the name of Jesus, we, we, your humble servants, bow this morning with bow heads and humble hearts. Thanking you, O God, for another day's journey. Thanking you for you've been good to us. Better than us, we know how to be to ourselves. You've been a lamp to our feet and a light to our pathway. You've directed us, oh God, even when we tried to do wrong, you have directed our path. And for this, we say thank you. Even in the absence, oh God, of our pastor this morning, oh God, I pray that you would go with him, be with him wherever he may be. Hold him in the hollow of your hand, I pray in the name of Jesus. And now, Lord, the priest man, O oh God, whom you have set aside, O oh God, to deliver your word on this morning, that you would let him down in the storehouse of your mercy, <laughs> that they would speak, not preach, not for form or fashion or outside show to the world, but that somebody would hear your word and come running, I yield, I yield, I can't hold out no longer. Father, we thank you. <laughs> oh, Lord, I, I just wish I had time to say it like I want to say it, but somebody's sick, Lord. Somebody, somebody's in trouble. God, we know you don't issue pills, you don't give out shots, but you just speak a word. Somebody be healed. Cancer is just a name, but your name is above every name. <laughs> yes, it is. It's your name. Your name is above every name. And Lord, it's in your name, Lord Jesus Christ, we come this morning and ask thee to touch. Touch, oh God, this praise team, this choir, oh God. Touch their vocal cords, touch their voices. They might have lift them on high. Praises go up. Somebody said, <laughs> blessings <laughs> come down. And Lord, we all need a blessing. No matter who you are, where you are, what you may have, we all need a blessing. In the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, bless this service. Bless this church, each member one by one and name by name. Until we come to that place where Job declared the wicked will cease from troubling and the weary will be at rest. Every day will be Sunday. <laughs> oh, God, keep us until that day. For certainly we cannot keep ourselves. And now, Lord, before I close this prayer, I don't remember our children, oh, God, look down upon the young people. Look down upon them, God, for the devil is trying to sift us all like we young and old. God, have mercy upon the young folk. Oh, God, make them know it's more than a game. It's more than a video. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. It's more than a cell phone. 
God. The cell phones are taking over their minds. The videos are taking over their minds, oh God. And oh God, have mercy upon the young folk, oh God. May we understand that we're in the 21st century. But God, make them to know you ought to come first. And if you come first, everything will be all right. Thank you, Lord. It's in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. If you agree that every heart say amen. Amen. Doctor. 
little theory of what's going on. I hey, I know what prayer can do. I know what prayer can do. I know, I know, I know what prayer can do. Somebody here, somebody right here, can help me what prayer can do. I know what prayer can do. I know what prayer can do. clap your hands. I'm like Brother Rod this morning. I'm a witness. I know what prayer can do. Prayer can change some things. Prayer can bring healing. Prayer can turn some things around. I know what prayer can do. Yeah, Lord. Woo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All I can do is wave my hand and say, thank you, Jesus. Because I know what prayer can do. Woo! Hallelujah. Why don't you just stand up and be a witness this morning? Why don't you just stand up and be a witness this morning? Why don't you just stand up and be a witness this morning? That you know what prayer can do. Prayer can change some things. Prayer can turn some things around. Prayer can heal the broken body. I know what prayer can do. Thank you, Jesus. Good morning, Calvary. Y'all gonna have to excuse me, but I just want y'all to know that I know what prayer can do. I just want y'all to know that prayer can touch when can't no, it can go places can't nobody else's go. And I know that on the last week, prayer went from here to Atlanta, Georgia, and everything is all right. And everything is all right. I know what prayer can do. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We give honor to God this morning who is the author and the finisher of our faith. And we give honor to our pastor and our first lady in their absence. And we give honor to the ministers on the rostrum today. And we give honor to all of those who are in their respective places. I just can't thank God enough, and I just can't thank you enough, Calvary, for your prayers. I just want y'all to know that everything is all right because God is in control. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, just a few reminders on today. Just a few reminders. We want to thank you, the Mount Calvary family, for your labor of love and prayers in the loss of the late sister, Annie Florence Murphy Mack. She is a sister of our members, my Sandy Hart, Sister Betty Thomas, Deacon Abraham Clemens, Deacon Owen Clemens, Brother Woodrow Clemens, Sister Creasy Sermon, and Brother Charles Smith. We are still praying for the entire Mack and Clemens family uh, and the immediate extended family. Our in-person services at Mount Calvary is every Sunday at 8 a.m., conference Sunday, sco Sunday schools at 9.20 a.m. on Sundays, and the number to call is 701-802-5337, and the access code is 683-1205, and the pound symbol. Our online stream is every Sunday at 10.15 a.m., the link to join us is www.worshipwithmtcalvary.org forward slash live. Why don't you take a little break of your lunch break with the Lord. 
Please join the Sister Sister Ministry at 12 noon on Wednesdays for conference call noonday prayer. That number is also 701-802-5337, and the access code is 683-1205 and the pound symbol. There will be no Sister Sister Vision Zoom meeting for the month of May, which is May is almost gone. We ask you to come back and join us again on Saturday, June the 25th at 11 a.m. in the church parking lot for Bible trivia. On next Sunday, we will be honoring and celebrating our high school and college graduates uh, during our in-person morning worship hour at 8 a.m. We're inviting the graduates and parents to attend the service, and we're asking graduates to wear their caps and gowns. On Thursday evening, June 9, 2022, the youth choir will be rehearsing for the month of June's Wednesday Night Live Spotlight service at 6 p.m. Parents, please put that on your calendar. And on Sunday morning, June 12, 2022, the male choir will be rehearsing immediately following our second Sunday service, in-person morning worship service, to prepare to sing during our upcoming Father's Day service. Thursday, June the 16th, 2022, at 7 p.m., you are invited to come out to fellowship, participate, and support the pre-recording service for the Spotlight Wednesday Night Live services for June, hosted by the Music, Dance, Media, and Sound Ministries. On June 19, 2022, at 11 a.m., New Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church anniversary in Clydeville, Georgia. Pastor Vincent is the speaker. And just a reminder to the men of Calvary that cleanup day is on June the 4th at 7.30 a.m. Men of Calvary, don't forget, put it on your calendar, cleanup day, 7.30 a.m. on Saturday, June the 4th. Thank you. With sincere thanks and appreciation, Sisters of Mount Calvary, I apologize for the delay in saying thank you, but I do say thank you for your thoughts, prayers, and gifts on behalf of my mother, Mother Rumay Garland, James and Shirley Garland. Well, this is the end of May 2022. And I just want to say happy birthday to those folks who are blessed to see another birthday in May. We pray that God have blessed you real well. And my thought for today is all I can say is, please don't forget to say thank you. Into this building, you brought your burden, brought your pain. I have a message for you today that I will you leave here. to your position look at you there's been no change in your condition but reach out and turn the master road that's healing for your mind your body
about your situation. But with every test and every trial, there is a revelation that God is able to supply every one of your needs. He's here to touch you. Oh, yeah, 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 God can. God can heal. He can. He can heal. He can. He can. He can. He can. You're broken. That you leave this building, my prayer for everyone in here is that to have your healing. Once God works a miracle to fit your needs, go tell the second chance in life. I don't know about you. But see, I know what prayer can do. I'm not the speaker today, but I, I got to get this off my chest. 
prayer and go places neither one of us can go. Prayer can go in the deepest and the lowest place in the world or the highest place. See, I know what prayer can do. Sister Lily, she opened the door. Over 10 years ago, when I had open heart surgery, prayer changes things. My reaction today is just like I never had a heart attack before because of prayer. Prayer changes things. And I received when I was lying down on the bed of affliction, the second opportunity. You know, sometimes the Lord have to take us down in order to lift us up. A lot of us think we are up and so high-minded and don't care about brothers and sisters, praying our neighbors. But there's somebody sitting up high, and he's looking down low. He opened the doors for everybody. He don't pick race, creed, nor colors. He don't pick no gender. He opens the door. We have to be the one to walk in. And I'm saying all of that to tell you this, brothers and sisters. I have received. I know many of you probably have received as well. Don't let this opportunity pass you by. It doesn't come two or three times in a lifetime. See, our Lord and Savior don't give nothing but second chances. You look to me, you want me to give, forgive you, forgive you, forgive you. Two or three times, I'm going to tell you, well, I'm forgiving you the second time. I ain't going to do it no more. But our Lord and Savior, he is still on the forgiving plan. Don't think that you have committed a crime or sin too big that God cannot forgive you for. And I'm telling you all of this now, and our pastor ain't here. So don't look for him. And I came up here say, to introduce you to our speaker today. It's not none of the, our sister's ministers sitting on the roster. It's not the guests that walk in the door. But it's one of our very own. And if he needs you, he needs you today. If you know anything about prayer, pray that he succeed. If you know anything about receiving, open your heart and receive none other than our own minister, Minister MacDougall. Amen. Praise God. Thank God for that wonderful introduction. Amen. Amen. I'm just glad to be in the number one more time. Amen. Praise God. I don't say that loosely. Amen. I remember the old St. Luther said a lot, but now I understand because, praise God, you here now, but you may be gone tomorrow. You may be gone that next second. Amen. That is why it's time to get it right with God and don't play church. Amen. Amen. As I stand, I do give unto Christ, which is the head of my life. Give unto my pastor, Dr. Charles Vincent. Give unto the first lady, Evelyn Diane Vincent. Give unto my lovely wife, Tawana Logan McDougal. <laughs> Give unto my mother, Lydia McDougal. Give unto Pastor Murphy and his wife. Give unto Pastor Home and his wife. Give unto uh, Evangel Churden and her husband. And give unto Minister Cephas. All the mothers, all the deacons, every and deaconess, everyone in respect for play. We just thank God for you. Amen. You may take your seat. Amen. Pray God. We're not gonna be before you too long, but we just want to stop by and encourage you. Amen. It's so much going on in the world, amen. But a lot of that is what? Distraction. To get your mind off Jesus, amen. But God is still is in charge, amen. God still is in charge, amen. We're going to read from you Luke, the first chapter, and the 41st verse. 
And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Oh, Heavenly Father, we come for you once again, Lord Jesus. As humble as we know how, Father, we ask you, Lord, that you give your people a word. Lord, we ask that you encourage somebody. And Lord, we ask you right now, Lord, that you touch the Clemens family. Encourage them, Lord, during their time, Lord Jesus, bereaved. And Father, we ask you that you go and touch the Mike Dugan Riley family. Touch them, Lord, right now, Lord Jesus, and the loss of their loved one. And Father, we ask you right now that you come in and you bless your people this morning. Lord, you know just what we need even before we ask, Lord Jesus. And Father, we ask you that you do it in your name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. This morning, I just want to talk to you just a little. Amen. And Luke, the fourth of first verse, saying, It came to pass that it, when the lips were heard the salutation of Mary, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And if we back up a little bit, we find that, that our Elizabeth was barren. Amen. She couldn't have no kids. She was quick and barren. But we find out that angel of the Lord, Gabriel, came to Zacharias and told him, God had heard your prayer. Right. He said, your wife, Elizabeth, going to have a child. Right. And he kind of doubted that. He didn't believe that. Right. He said, how could it be? I, you don't wait till I'm old now. And my wife is squeaking with barren. But the angel told him, Gabriel said, since you doubt him, praise God, you're going to come dumb until it manifests. Amen. You're not going to be able to speak until this happens so that you'll know that he is God. Amen. And that's when he came out, he wasn't able to speak. So some of the people thought maybe he had a vision while he was in the temple. And also, the angel went to Mary. And they told Mary, Mary, that you're going to have a baby. You're going to conceive a child. And Mary said, how could this be? Pray God, I know no man. But he said, that you conceive is of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm here to talk to you this morning about Jesus is a game changer. And, and, and the point I want you to realize this morning that no one goes away for Jesus unchanged. And point two, I want you to know that your situation and your condition change any time that you have an encounter with Jesus. You won't be the same. Amen. But you got to ask yourself, praise God, when you come to church, what are you expecting? On, Amen. You got to bring something to the table. On, you can't lay it all on the pastor. Have you been fasting up? Amen. Have you been on your knees praying for this thing for God? But see, Jesus is a game changer, but you got to have your faith. You got to have faith in Christ that he's going to do this thing when you come to church. You just can't just come and just sit there. And, and, and it don't make no sense for you to come burden down and leave burden. It don't make no sense for you to come broken and you still live broken. If you got faith in Christ, amen, he is a game changer. Pray God, he's the same God now that he was then. Pray God, I believe when Elizabeth heard the same text of Mary, her situation changed. Her condition changed. She went from just being Elizabeth, but she bound a child. It's the forewoman for Christ. And he told him that his name was going to be John. John was the forewoman before Christ. He had to come so he can what? Prepare the way for Jesus. He had to come so he could try to bring Israel back into the fourth. Amen? He was making a way for our Savior. We found out the baby John leaped for joy. Amen? And his situation changed when he was being born to be the forewoman for Jesus. He had to prepare for the coming of the Savior. Baby John, when he leaped, he would feel the Holy Ghost, and his mother would feel the Holy Ghost. Amen. But see, the thing about it, I want you to understand, baby John understood his assignment. He understood his calling. We sang a song, say, I'm not my own no more. And see, he's not his own. He was born for a reason. Amen. Anytime you come and encounter with Jesus, your situation changes. And your condition. I wonder how many this morning situation has changed. Have your condition changed? 
you should never encounter with Christ remain the same. Pray God. And then when you got that encounter, do you understand your assignment? See, a lot of us a little loud because we understand our cause. And Jesus got a cause for all of us, a divine purpose. And let me say it again. Do we understand our assignment? Pray God, some of us can't understand our assignment. Because we're too busy. Worry about somebody's assignment. Let me say that one more time to the person in the back. Some of us don't understand I didn't get our assignment because we're too busy. Worrying about somebody's assignment, somebody's calling. Amen. It's easy to sit back and say, well, if I were her, I would do this. I would do it this way. Amen. And then you sit back on your telling what God gave you. Amen. You wonder why this one over here could speak in tongues, this one lay hand, and this one could sing, but you got to what? Abide in your own calling. In 1 Corinthians 7 20, it said, Let every man abide in the same calling where someone else, someone else assignment and calling. So, God, let you know, you got to abide in your own calling. I didn't call you to preach. He may call you to teach. Whatever you're calling, you got to buy it in your own calling. And, 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 and you just can't look just because somebody may seem like they're doing so good. You don't know what that person went through to get that anointing. You don't know the trouble they went through, the pain, the agony. It takes something to have that type of anointing. So God called you to be a parking lot person, be a good one. If God called you to be a usher, then you be a good one. If God called you to be a dog greeter, then you'd be a good dog greeter. Maybe he called you just to keep the service clean. Then you do that. We got all kind of ministry. We got the food ministry. All this is needed in God's house. And no one is more important than another. But the thing is, you got to what? Abide in your own calling. And see, that's how the devil come in and trick you, man. Because you can invent an uh, image of the person because of the way God blessing them. But you got that one talent you never use. And see, one thing about it, you don't use what God gave you. He'll take it and give it to somebody else. So why will you trust you with more when you're doing nothing with what you have? That is not how God operates, amen? God is a game changer. <laughs> amen? Point one, this is very clear. And consistent prince with New Testament we stay the simple. No one goes away from Jesus Christ unchanged. So what, what, what's going on? So we are still in the same condition that we came in. What's wrong? Are we really believing that Christ can do what he said he can do? Are you really believe that God is a game changer? Amen? It said that you won't lead the same. This is say that no one encounter him lead the encounter the same condition that they begin in. So how do you know that? Pray God, I heard one day that the blind man came away seeing. I heard the deaf man came away hearing. Pray God, we find out the lame left Jesus walking. Amen. The leper, he came in contact with Jesus. And he left away clean. The poor, they had good news proclaimed to him. Those without a chapel, guess what? They came a shepherd. Those without a teacher were taught. The sick got well, and the dead were raised alive. No one leaves Jesus the same. Amen. You're going to be changed somewhere or another. Amen. Everybody may not be changed the same way, but a change is coming. Whether you like it or not. It's a sadly. Today, our song went away, change of the worst. So what are you talking about? Yes, yeah, some went away glad, but some went away sad. Yeah. And some went away mad. The rich young man went away sad, for his possession was many. And though he hidden the call of Jesus, he couldn't embrace it. Now, here's the one that came and said, good master, what must I do? to be saved. Huh? And Jesus said, oh, come on, you know the law. Just, just keep the commandment. Oh, he felt good about himself then. He said, I, I, I did that. 
ass I was a child. But see, Jesus can see far more than what you're talking about. Amen. He can see that heart. That stuff you think nobody else can't see. He said, then I tell you what. Won't you sell all that you have and give to the Pope? Oh, man, he went away sad. He hold his head. He could embrace the true God. He went away sad because he had much. But your riches ain't going to get you in heaven. Amen. See, God know your heart. He know what holding you back. The thing that holding you back, you got to just let it go. It is not worth going to hell. Amen. Because one thing about it, all your riches, all your material stuff, I never seen a U-Haul behind a hearse. You can't take it with you. You're just going to have it there, and the next person's going to enjoy it. Amen. That's where that's worth. And, thank God, we found that he went away mad, sad, because he couldn't embrace it. The Pharisee and the other unbeliever, one went away mad, they were so mad. Because Jesus spoke the word of truth. That they plotted to kill him. Now these are the Pharisees. Why were they so mad? They were mad because Jesus came with the truth. They walk around with their high fashion clothes on. Want to be somebody. Want to be seen by the people when they walk in the street. They wanted the people to call them rabbi. They were high minded but you know they had a, 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 a sign of God but denying the point of power. And so Jesus he tore all that down. Even in the temple when they were changed, he told that down. That is not what he wanted. And see, when Jesus came to the Pharisees, praise God, that, that changed their whole out. Look out. He was in the field, they minded what he got going on. The people started looking at Jesus and taking their eyes off of them. They didn't like that. So they said, Oh, we got to get rid of him. Amen. But guess what? They went away. What? Change. Anybody he encountered, kind of whether it was good, bad, sad, or what, it was a change coming. Because what Jesus is, a game changer. Amen. The scripture also said, unappreciated and poor understood, at one level, there are those who think they can remain large and neutral about Jesus. Appreciate sudden of an ethical teaching, but dying his divinity or his wish of as Lord. So what are we talking about? Some of preachers, teachers, want to remain neutral. Now, you know God's word. God said, thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not commit the dust. Then you can't do it. But some want to remain neutral because they're afraid they're going to offend somebody. Some don't want to preach about tithing. Some don't want to preach about homosexuality. But all these things is in God's word. You can't remain neutral and serve God. Amen. It, 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 no third way is given. There's no third team on the field. And if you think you can play some third team or you can play for both teams, I got news for you. You're about what team you really on. Huh? What team you on? You ain't a God. You can't play both sides. He said, I'd rather you be hot or cold than lukewarm. I don't want you in the middle. And nothing in the middle. You got to be to the left or the right. Amen. It said, praise God. But even for the believer that remain mitigated way in which God teaching is diminished. If it is biblical to truth that no one goes away from Jesus Christ on changing, then the question becomes whether a believer will believe this is when it comes from the sacraments, prayer, reading of the scripture. When we do a holy communion and we do baptism, ordaining, what? Are you expecting from Christ? What are we expecting? Just let that point. Of. What are you expecting something? I, 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 are you just going through ritualism? What do you expect Christ to do for you? What do you expect Jesus to do? Is it true that sacrament are encountered with the living Lord Jesus? Then what are your expectations? I bring this encounter. Many people in fight. Put their faith in Tylenol more than do Christ. Huh? Because with Jesus, you ain't expecting nothing to happen. Come here broken, you're going to leave broken. Huh? Come nigh him, changing, buying, you're going to leave bound. 
What is your expectation? You know, it's hard because when they take the town, though, they expect something to happen. You don't hear it. Man, I got this old headache. My legs roll up. But if I get one of them tall, I'm going to be all right. I'm going to wait for it. I, I, I know I'm going to feel better to why. Then the older the older going to tell you, can I get one of them old good as a BC and the RC? Huh? I, I know the pain going to go away then. That's the only thing that can help me. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Because then you say you're expecting something to happen. You expect the pain to go away. You you expect the swelling to go down. Yeah, they expect the healing and the shame, but when people come forward to see you, the Holy Communion, what do you expect? Frankly, it's been experienced that most don't expect much. They see it as more original. Uh, they don't see no transform of reality. I lay a lot of blame of the low expectation on us. Very few of us preach and teach the people that they should expect a dramatic transformation through faithfulness, celebration of the sacrament, person, prayer, reading of the scripture, walking the fellowship. Let's, basically what he's saying, listen, this is my body. Broken for you. I've been whipped, beaten for your transgression. And you say you got this and you break it, my body for you. This cup is my blood. That I shed for you. When, when you're taking this, right, you know what you're saying? You, you make, you're making another covenant. You're renewing your covenant Amen. with Jesus. So by you renewing your covenant, amen, you should feel something. Amen. amen. This just shouldn't be tradition. This just be something that should just go through the most. Yeah, this is my body. I take, drink this and, and just get on. That's not what it's supposed to be. But when you come into God's house, and we have the different stuff going on as communion, a baptism. You should be what want to expect something. You should be expecting a change. Even when we have baptism, what do you expect to happen? Other you going down in the water and come back up? Are you expecting God to change? Are you expecting that old man to stay down there and you be risen with Christ? Are you looking for a change? Well, I'm here to tell you that God is a game changer. But it's up to us. To have that expectation. The same way you have that faith and that medication. God can remove pain. Amen. God can remove a broken heart. God can remove a broken marriage. God can bring your children back that you have a problem. Only God can do that because Jesus is what? He is a game changer. What is your expectation, amen, when you come in God high? Do you want to leave the same or you expect God to do something, amen? See, God said he'll heal that, amen. He'll heal that broken heart. Amen. That loneliness that you feel, amen, that hurt you may be feeling, God can change it. Because God is a game changer. All you got to do is just come for him and believe in and trust in and have faith. God is a game changer. I mean, how I know he's a game changer? Praise God, we found out the woman had the issue of blood for 12 long years. Amen. But she made up her mind that I got a plan. I heard about this man, Jesus. If I just get there, if I just get to the cry, if I just press my way through, I know I'll be healed. Amen. She pressed her way through the cry. Amen. And Jesus turned around and said, Lord, he says, somebody touch me. And, and, and his disciples said, Lord, look, look, you don't be him then. There's many people around you. Anybody could have bumped you. But Jesus said, I'm not talking about a bump. He said, but somebody touch me. I found my virtual leader, man. I found her faith. She wanted something for me, man. That's the way you got to go, man. When you want Jesus to do something for you, you got to press your way through the crowd. You can't let nobody hold you back. But press, hold on to your faith. And God will change, amen. He is a game changer. Amen. What he did for others, amen, he'll do for you. Just know that you're coming to the house of God. Come and expect a miracle. Come and expect the impossible. Look up to God where all our help comes from, man. Not the help that we know. Thank you, praise God. Jesus is a game changer. Amen.
brothers and sisters, we have heard. You may be seated for a minute. We have heard from our aunt, Minister McDougall, letting you and letting I know that Jesus is a game changer. Jesus can change your mind setting. Sometimes you have a mind setting in one way, the Lord will change it into another. You can make up in your mind to do one thing and the spirit of the Lord said, no, do something else different. He is a game changer. But my brothers and sisters, the reason we don't trust and believe in him because we can't see him. The McDougal was speaking about the invisible James changer. He had been changing games for decades. He is changing games today. And he will continue to change games in the future. No man, no woman, no boy, no girl, no nationality of people can beat Jesus game changer. You may try, but that's all you can do. He is the best there is. There's none no greater than he. He is a game changer. He can change your life. Right now, at any spare a moment he wants to. Now it's time for you to stand. The doors of the church is open. For anyone that is among us who would like to have their life changed. Jesus is in the changing plan. He can change your game no matter how much you have already planned down through the years. Jesus can change it today. All you have to do is come forth and give your hands to the pastor, to the minister. But when you place it in the pastor or the minister's hand, you're not placing it in their hands. You're placing it in the instrument that God is only using the men and women for today. There may be one or two I'd like to come forth, become a member of this church, or any other church. Now is the time to come forth. Make up in your mind that you're going to accept Jesus to change in your life. He can move mountains. Now is the time to come forth. Maybe someone that is among us standing in the need of prayer today. Those are open for anyone that stands in the need of prayer. Now is the time to come forth. Forever he will reign. And for prayer.
Father, we ask you, O Lord, just to go forth into this world. Touch those, O Lord, that are lying down on a bed of affliction. Heavenly Father, you know who they are. You know their condition. Father, we ask you, O Lord, just to touch them in a special way. And Father, we ask you, O Lord, to go around the bereaved family across this land. Father, we ask you, O Lord, just to brace them up on every leaning side. Father, strengthen them, Lord, rather we. Father, we have brothers and we have sisters that are going through the bereaved time at this moment. We ask you, Father, just a special touch. Father, let them know that you're God and beside there is no other. Father, let them know that your will must be done on earth as it is in heaven. And Father, we ask your Lord just to look down upon our pastor, look down upon his wife. Father, we ask your Lord to protect both of them no matter where they're at. And Father, we ask your Lord to look down upon each and every member, one by one, name by name. Father, we ask you, Lord, to go around to all of our natural homes. Father, we ask you right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, just to touch those that are sick, Father, in the natural home this morning. Touch them, Father. They may have diabetes, Father. Father, just touch them. They may have heartaches, Father. Touch them. But, Father, we ask you, Lord, to look down upon this church and all other churches. Father, we ask you, Lord, just to touch the, the shepherd of this house. Touch all of our deacon and deaconesses. Touch all of our ministers and ministered wives. But most of all, Father, touch us as a whole. In your son Jesus' name. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior, sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest and rule and abide by each and every one of us. As we leave these doors, Father, we are leaving the building, but we are not leaving you. We ask you, Father, just to throw protection arm around each and every one of us. In your son Jesus' name. And let every heart say amen. 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 <laughs> 